Nuclear power plants are some of the most complex and important pieces of infrastructure in the world. They take years to construct and require massive amounts of planning, engineering and resources. One such plant, the Vogel plant in Georgia, is a recent example of this, with its construction taking over a decade and costing billions of dollars. In this video, we'll explore the Vogel plant and its significance for the future of nuclear energy. Vogel's nuclear power plant construction began with initial planning in the late 2000s. The project, located in Waynesboro, Georgia, aimed to expand the existing Vogel electric generating plant. The planning phase involved site selection, regulatory approvals and design considerations to meet safety and environmental standards. In 2012, the US Nuclear Regulatory Commission NRC, granted a construction and operating license for Vogel Units 3 and 4, marking a significant milestone. Soon after, the project faced challenges that made things difficult. But despite these setbacks, which we will also reveal before the end of this video, construction officially commenced in 2013, with the primary contractors being Westinghouse Electric Company and CB&I. Vogel's expansion features advanced AP1000 reactor technology, known for enhanced safety features. Now, if you aren't familiar with what the advanced AP1000 can do, I will tell you. The AP1000 is a type of pressurized water reactor designed to generate 1,117 megawatt electrical of power. It's an improved version of the AP600, offering more power while maintaining a similar size. Its roots trace back to the System 80 design, which had a global presence. Initially evolving from System 80, the AP600 aimed for a smaller output but faced limited interest. To compete with larger designs reducing capital costs, it re-emerged as the AP1000 and gained design wins at this increased scale. Presently, 10 AP1000s are either operational or under construction, with four in China at Sanman and Haiyang nuclear power plants, all connected to the grid by 2019. The AP1000 focuses on cost-effectiveness by using existing technology, requiring fewer components, and employing standardization. It boasts significant reductions in safety-related elements such as valves, pumps, piping, control cables, and seismic building volume. Notably, the AP1000 is more land-efficient than many existing PWRs, using significantly less concrete and reinforcing material. The design incorporates probabilistic risk assessment for enhanced safety with a low core damage frequency of 5.09 times 10 to negative 7 per plant per year, according to the NRC. Used fuel from the AP1000 can be stored on site indefinitely in water or above ground dry cask storage. The design addresses the need to dissipate heat generated by radioactive decay products even after the main reactor is shut down. To accomplish passive core cooling, the AP1000 employs Westinghouse's system using a water tank above the reactor. When activated, the water flows by gravity, evaporating at the top to remove heat. The system relies on explosively operated and DC operated valves that activate within the first 30 minutes, independent of reactor operator action. This passive cooling is designed to operate for 72 hours, requiring a gravity drain water tank top-up for continued cooling. In terms of machinery, the AP1000 uses canned motor pumps, hermetically sealed and directly mounted on the steam generator's bottom. This configuration minimizes large diameter primary loop piping. Aside from the AP1000 reactor technology, the Vogel plant houses Westinghouse pressurized water reactors, each paired with a general electric steam turbine and electric generator. Towering at 548 feet, the natural draft cooling towers facilitate the plant's main condensers, while smaller mechanical draft towers handle nuclear service cooling water. In 2009, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission extended the licenses for both units, ensuring operation until January 16, 2047 for Unit 1 and September 2, 2049 for Unit 2. The initial capital investment for Vogel's first two units faced a significant leap during construction, skyrocketing from an estimated $660 million to a staggering $8.87 billion. 
This financial revolution, equivalent to $18.3 billion in 2022, highlights the complex journey of bringing these units to life. The saga continued with the addition of two more units utilizing Westinghouse AP-1000 reactors, their construction initiated in 2009. The Unit 3 reactor is set to power around 500,000 homes and businesses, providing clean energy without emitting greenhouse gases. This marks a significant milestone, as the last nuclear reactor to contribute to the power grid was Watts Bar Unit 2 in October 2016, operated by the Tennessee Valley Authority. According to Scott Burnell, a spokesperson for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, there hasn't been a new nuclear reactor turned on since Watts Bar 1 in May 1996. As we briefly mentioned, the journey to this point involved the construction of Vogel 3 and 4, which began in June 2009. However, this process, like its predecessors, faced unexpected delays and cost overruns, as highlighted by nuclear energy scholars at Columbia University. Initially estimated at $14 billion, the cost of building both reactors had soared to $30 billion, and the completion dates were pushed beyond the initial projections of 2016 and 2017. Columbia's energy analysts, Matt Bowen, Rama T. Penangi, and Andrew Evans attribute some of these challenges to starting construction before finalizing the design. In addition to the financial hurdles, there were delays in completing the project. This delay was linked to the adjustments in the design and the complicated regulations that needed to be followed. It's like trying to finish a puzzle but realizing you need to rearrange some pieces and then finding out you have to follow a set of tricky rules to complete it. These challenges are comparable to facing unexpected twists in a road trip, unexpected tolls and detours due to changes in plans or navigating through complicated routes. Just like a road trip, the project had to adapt to these unforeseen challenges to reach its destination successfully. Just so you know, the United States witnessed a surge in nuclear energy development during the 1970s and 1980s, but sentiment declined sharply after the Three Mile Island accident in 1979. As if that weren't enough, the Fukushima disaster of 2011 occurred, giving rise to more worries and concerns. In the aftermath of the Fukushima disaster, regulatory changes became a focal point in the nuclear energy landscape. Governments worldwide revisited safety protocols, leading to increased scrutiny and stricter regulations for new nuclear projects. The Vogel itself had to navigate this evolving regulatory environment. Amidst these changes, Vogel is adopting unique construction methods and technologies to enhance safety and efficiency. The project utilizes advanced reactor designs and modular construction techniques, allowing for greater precision and quicker assembly. These innovations aim not only to meet the revised regulatory standards, but also to elevate the overall safety profile of the nuclear facility. However, implementing these groundbreaking methods isn't without its challenges. Vogel has encountered major engineering hurdles during its construction grappling with issues such as complex site conditions and the integration of cutting-edge technologies. The site-specific challenges, including soil characteristics and environmental considerations, demand adaptable engineering solutions to ensure the project's success. One notable engineering challenge is the construction of the containment structures. These massive concrete and steel barriers, designed to confine potential radiation releases, require intricate planning and precise execution. The Vogel project has tackled this challenge by employing advanced simulation tools and collaborative engineering practices, ensuring the robustness of the containment structures. But these issues seem not to be too much of a big deal to some countries because, in recent years, there has been a resurgence of interest in nuclear energy driven by a growing sense of urgency to address climate change and meet the demand for clean energy. Nuclear energy played a crucial role, contributing 47% of America's carbon-free electricity in 2022, according to the Department of Energy, and maintaining a consistent contribution of around 20% to the nation's overall energy since the 1990s. 
Looking ahead, Unit 4 of the Vogel plant was expected to become operational in the late fourth quarter of 2023, but since that didn't happen, we're looking forward to the second speculation, which is the first quarter of 2024, as announced by Georgia Power. Ownership of the Vogel Power plant is divided, with Georgia Power holding 45.7%, Oglethorpe Power Corporation owning 30%, the Municipal Electric Authority of Georgia having 22.7% and Dalton Utilities possessing 1.6%. The implications of projects like the Vogel Nuclear Facility extend beyond the immediate construction phase. They play a crucial role in shaping a diverse energy portfolio, and having a mix that includes carbon-free nuclear energy is vital. Such a portfolio contributes significantly to maintaining a reliable and affordable energy infrastructure. This is important not just for today, but for the future as well. A diverse energy portfolio can attract new investments into the energy sector. Investors are more likely to be drawn to projects that offer a mix of energy sources, providing stability and resilience against market fluctuations. The inclusion of carbon-free nuclear energy adds a layer of sustainability making the energy portfolio more appealing for those seeking environmentally friendly investments. Further, a well-balanced energy portfolio supports economic growth. By incorporating different sources like nuclear energy, the overall energy supply becomes more robust. This stability is essential for industries that rely heavily on a consistent and affordable energy supply, ensuring that they can operate efficiently. As industries grow and thrive, they contribute to the overall economic prosperity of the region or country. In addition to attracting investments and fostering economic growth, a diverse energy portfolio that includes nuclear energy will no doubt create job opportunities. The construction and operation of nuclear facilities such as the Vogel project require a skilled workforce. From engineers and technicians to support staff, these projects generate employment opportunities at various skill levels. This not only benefits the individuals finding employment, but also contributes to the broader community's socio-economic well-being. Transitioning to the impact on the industry, the completion of projects like Vogel holds significant importance for the nuclear industry in the United States. It serves as a benchmark, showcasing the successful execution of a large-scale nuclear facility. This success has the potential to instill confidence in the industry, attracting further attention and support. Investors and stakeholders may view Vogel's completion as a positive signal, potentially encouraging more investments in similar projects. Vogel's completion will set a precedent for future nuclear projects in the US. The lessons learned and the success achieved can be valuable in shaping the approach to upcoming endeavors. This includes improvements in project management, technological advancements and regulatory processes. The positive outcomes from Vogel may contribute to streamlining the development and execution of future nuclear initiatives, making them more efficient and cost-effective. Looking ahead, the completion of Vogel will mark not just an end, but a new beginning for the nuclear industry. It will open the door to upcoming projects that can build on the knowledge and experience gained. The industry may witness increased interest and collaboration with stakeholders exploring innovative solutions and technologies to further enhance the safety, efficiency and sustainability of nuclear energy. Do you agree? Share what you think about this project in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and for more exciting projects on the way, like the Small Modular Reactor Project in Idaho, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.